John the Baptist said to the crowds who came to be baptized by him, You children of snakes, who warned you to escape the angry judgment that is coming soon? Produce fruit that shows you have changed your hearts and your lives. And don't even think about saying to yourself, Well, Abraham is our father. I tell you that God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. The crowds asked him, what then should we do? And he answered, whoever has two shirts must share with the one who has none. And whoever has food must do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. And they said to him, teacher, what should we do? And he replied, collect no more than you're authorized to collect. Soldiers asked, well, what about us? What should we do? And he answered, don't cheat or harass anyone and be satisfied with your pay. The people were filled with expectation and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ, the Messiah. John replied to all, I baptize you with water. But the one who is more powerful than I is coming. And I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husk is in his hands. And he will clean out the threshing area. And he will bring the wheat into his barn. And he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. With many other words, John appealed to them, proclaiming good news to all the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Would you bow with me? Lord, we give you thanks for this, your holy word. We give you thanks for the way that you use it in our lives. Lord, as I come this day, I pray that you would forgive me of anything that would stand in the way of my service to you and this, your people. Pray that the message that is given will be your message, and the words that are spoken will be your words. Above all of that, Lord, as we gather in your name as your people, we pray that the way that you would use this message to change our hearts and our lives would be according to your will. We will give you all the praise and honor and glory for the amazing and wonderful things you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Great visions here, right? Who warned you to escape the angry judgment, you children of snakes? Can you imagine a, a forest fire and the snakes slithering away trying to escape? Now that's that's the that's the vision I get when I read this. You brood of vipers is what some versions say. Uh, produce fruit that shows that you you know evidence. You've come out here. You say you want. To be more godly, more godlike, you want you want Messiah to come, and yet you're still doing the same stuff. And then the tax collectors come and say, "Okay, we're we're in. What do we do?" Well, tax collectors back then, you know, the way they ran their business, and the reason everybody hated them was because if they were supposed to collect ten whatever dollars from you, they would start off asking you for twenty. And they would negotiate down to wherever they needed to be so that they got to keep some extra. Maybe they, they settle with you at 13 or 14 and you feel good about it because you're more than halfway to where you didn't know you were supposed to be. But that's how they took advantage of people. The soldiers came. And these are probably not going to be Roman soldiers so much as they're going to be uh, Herod's soldiers, the, the king, his soldiers at the palace. And they came and, and they're like, what should we do? I mean, think about it. You, you've got a Jewish prophet. Most likely, he's really getting the attention of the Jewish people. And so they come and they say, well, what should we do? And John says, quit extorting people. Because they would go to someone and if, if they wanted something or, or something more, if they needed some special treatment or, or wanted some, some lambs from your flock, they would threaten you. They would say, look, there's six of us here. We can burn your house down and we got enough people to witness whatever we want. 
And they would extort people. And John said, quit doing that. He says, be satisfied with your pay. Now, I want you to understand, this is, you know, this is a couple thousand years ago. Inflation wasn't a problem like it is at certain times during our life today. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying you should never be willing to ask or, or desire to ask that you get paid a little additional. That's not where we're going with this. But what he's saying is, quit trying to do things that extort extra from others because of your position. And he talks about judgment. I mean, can you see all the judgment here? The fire burning. He says, he says, Christ, the one who's coming, he's already got the, 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 the shovel in his hand. It's a big, wide bladed. And, and, and they would go in, and after you gather the grain, there's a lot of husks in it. So you, you let it dry for a while. And then you catch a windy day, and you go in, and you just, you just throw the grain into the air, and, and the wind blows all the trash out. The shaft and the husks. And the only thing that falls back into place is the seed. And so then it says he's going to gather up the seed and put it in his barn. Those are his people. And everything else is going to get burned with a fire that cannot be put out. In other words, nothing's going to stop God from completing his purpose. Can't stop that fire. And then, and then Luke ends this section of writing with this statement. And many other words... John appealed to them, proclaiming good news to the people. Where's the good news at? <laughs> Y'all tell me, where, where's the good news in this? Huh? Well, I, I, think I, can, I think I can help you with that question. There is some good news here. There's a lot of threats, a lot of judgment. But the good news in the midst of all of these warnings and all this judgment is that you... I can be better at who we are. That's, that's what he was talking about. He was trying to get people to look at the needs of others. And no matter what you did or who you were, you could help take care of someone else. That was the good news in this section of, of the writing, see? John's telling them, look, if you've got, you got extra shirts and you meet somebody that doesn't have one, give them one of them. You've got enough. You mean, you only wear one at a time if it, it's a coat, right? He says, the same way with food, if you've got more than you need or if you've got enough to meet your needs and you find someone who doesn't have any, give them some of your food. And, and then he talks about being happy with who you are and the place that you are and taking care of others. See, that's the good news. When you, when you look at all this, I, I guess, to me, it's amazing. The tax collectors, the soldiers, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world here. Heck, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world now, isn't it? Isn't that what it seems to you? When you look around, you, you see all the, the things that are going on, the news headlines, and people taking things that aren't them or taking advantage of their situation, their position, taking advantage of other people. All to get ahead, right? I mean, we got to get ahead. We, we, we got to get ahead at all costs. That's what the world teaches us anyway. See, that's our value is how much we got, and how far we've ascended up the ladder. Forget how many people we stepped on getting there, you know. And John says, that's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way it's supposed to be at all. So I got a question, bro. Was John a great prophet? Jesus said a greater prophet would never come, right? Was he a great preacher? Yeah. yeah. Why? Spoke the truth. Huh? Spoke the truth. Well, he told the truth. He got results. He was effective. People came out and they changed their lives because of what he did and said. To me, he got results. I mean, uh, William, if you're gonna if you're gonna start at fullback or tailback or tied in or wherever it's at. Are you going to get there without results? No. No. you you got to produce, right? Yeah. And, and that's that's what when, when people produce and they excel, we think they're great at it. Well, to me, that's why John's great at being the prophet and the preacher. He got results, see. When when he spoke, people listened and it and it mattered. You know, y'all heard the joke about the, the taxi driver, you know, the uh, the the guy who's been the pastor for 50 years, he dies, he goes to heaven, and, 
And St. Peter takes him to a nice little place where he gets to stay. And he's looking up on the hill there. And he says, how come, how come there's a bigger, nicer place up there? And St. Peter says, that's a taxi truck. So what's the deal with that? I, I preached for 50 years. He says, yeah, when you preach, people slept. And when he drove, they prayed. You know, he got results, right? <laughs> okay, all right. So, so, <laughs> so John, John got results. And I think that's important as we look at who we are in our everyday lives. You look at this, John's not asking the tax collectors to change what they do. He's asking them to change how they do it. He's not talking to the, the soldiers about trying to get them to change their occupation or their vocation. He's trying to get them to be better at taking care of others because of their position. And that's the good news for me in this section of writing. Barclay says this, Nowhere can a man serve God better than in his every day's work. No matter who you are, what you do, whether you're uh, retired, a student, employed, Working at a government office or teaching or an administration. No matter what you do, there's an opportunity every day in your life to make someone else's life a little better. Sometimes it's just like, you know, the opening prayer. Maybe it's just a warm smile or, a, or a, a, a loving greeting. Showing love in different ways, you see? Every day has that opportunity. Barclay says there's no place that a man serves God better than where he's been put. See, we can be affected in our everyday work, in our vocations, no matter what we do, just like John was. Barclay goes on to say that John painted a picture of judgment, but it was a judgment which a man could meet with confidence if he discharged his duty to his neighbors and if he had faithfully done his day's work. We owe loyalty to our vocations, no doubt. But see, if we keep God first and we keep the values of the good news of the kingdom, the gospel of Jesus Christ, if we keep that at the center of what we do and who we are, then we'll always be willing to go a little further, a little extra mile for those around us. And we'll always be willing to look at the needs of others and meet them. That's what John's talking about. No matter what you do, there's an opportunity for you to use your position to make someone else's life a little better. I'm not talking about it in a, in, a, in, a, in a bad, you know, I'm not talking about taking advantage of it in a bad way. I'm not talking about stealing to give to someone. But I'm talking about you will, you'll have that opportunity to make a difference in someone's life, you see. And that's the good news. No matter where you work, no matter what you do, even if you're retired, you have these opportunities. I can, I can hear Paul as he's writing Colossians 3. He says, whatever you do, do it from your heart. And do it for the Lord, not just as if it were only for people. When we give that little extra effort, when we make that little extra effort, it makes a difference in the lives of others. You see? Now, what are the effects of the good news here? Well, think about Cornelius. He was a soldier, but he, he was a Roman soldier. But he became a better soldier. Think about Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector. But it changed his life, didn't it? And he became a better tax collector. Nicodemus remained a Pharisee, but he was a better Pharisee. See, he, he, he started to see a little bit more about what God's desires for the kingdom and God's people really were all about. The disciples were still fishermen. Think about it. You know, during that time when, when, when they didn't know what to do after Jesus had died and resurrected, they were still confused. You know, one of them says, I'm going back to fishing. And he did. They were still fishermen. But when they figured it out, they became better fishermen, didn't they? I mean, look where we are here 2,000 years later because they became fishers of men. They were a better themselves. And we can be a better us. You can be a better you. You heard that old saying, bloom where you're planted. You know, sometimes we're planted among the rocks, and sometimes it's a little hard to grow, and it's a little hard to bloom. But that's okay, because if that's where we're supposed to be in life, 
then we're still going to get the opportunity to make the lives of others around us better. We're still going to get that opportunity to meet the needs of someone else. And I think about the parable of the talents. If you're given one, then use it. If you're given ten, then use them. If you're only given one, that's fine. Bloom where you're planted. No matter where you're at in life, no matter what you're doing, there's always an opportunity to bless the lives of somewhere else. And that's one of the ways that we show worship to God is through our actions of encouragement and love to others. So I hope that today as you listen to this reading, it's filled with lots and lots of judgment. Lots and lots of visions of things that aren't pleasant. You can hear Luke's word as he says, you know, John spoke these and other words of good news to the people. And that you can realize that the good news for us is no matter where we are and what we're doing, it's, it's good that we're there. We can bloom where we're planted. And we can be a better us at showing Christ to the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.